Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with chapter 11, section 2, and this is a continuation of imperialism. It will focus on the vocabulary terms. Yes. Uh, that way, when you're turning up at a party, you can quiz people <laughs> on these terms. Exactly. And looking at these pictures, these political cartoons, you already see the domination of the white man in Africa over there, a little social Darwinism that we talked about, and then that octopus England having its hands all over the place. That's right. That is Cecil Rhodes, the... Uh, governor of South Africa, British leader, and this is the British version of Uncle Sam. This is John <laughs> Bull, um, but this is in tentacle form. So, some vocabulary, some connections to imperialism. So, when a country took over another country, they ruled differently. So, indirect rule um, was letting the existing ruler, so in Africa, some of those tribal leaders, um, handle the daily or day-to-day -day, um, running of the um, of the group. And the officials from the other country, the I don't know, imperialist country, would either teach them their methods of government or um, you know work with them and sort of I don't know give them advice maybe, but allow the local rules to have some sort of control. And this worked well for England because they controlled so many countries. Mm -hmm. They did not have enough officials to, to rule the, all these far off lands. Exactly. But if it was a major issue, uh, England still had the power and, and indirect like rule. the authority, yeah, too. Yeah. So it's not like the Africans had their freedom. <laughs> Unfortunately. And direct rule is, is pretty obvious. The imperialists have complete control over the management of, of these African uh, countries. Um, they viewed the Africans as unable to handle running a country, even though they were before the Europeans say, yeah. showed up, and the French and the Belgians were, um, they used it, direct rule. We have paternalism, which is uh -huh. the idea that, you know, paternalistic, like take a fatherly, paternity test. Yep, like when I was on Maury, yep. you are the father. <laughs> exactly. Oops, hit the wrong button. Oh, oh guys. <laughs> uh, paternalism, the Europeans provide for their needs, but they don't give them any rights. So and, think of like a, a child. So the father's... You know, treating them like a kid, like this is what you need to do, uh, but you have to follow my rules. Yeah, so not good for the Africans. No. And they're going to try to force their ways on the Africans. This policy is known as assimilation. So you're forcing your your religion, your language, your customs, your government, your government, yep. um, and enforcing the Africans to adopt these ways. And in my class, one of my students just said assimilation. They saw the word similar, so maybe a connection there with the definition, because a lot of these definitions are very similar um, and related to one another. So, a couple more definitions <laughs> for you, people. Uh, forms of imperialism. We have a colony where a country or territory is governed internally by a foreign power. Think That's of like, the British, and they had their 13 colonies here in America. The British king uh, was was in charge of the 13 colonies. Yeah, and that's like that direct rule that we were just talking about. Yeah. So a protectorate um, is that a country territory with its own internal government, but under the control of an outside power. So think of like the word protection. So there's some of that maybe indirect control, but the, the imperialist country is protecting them, and they have some influence. Good way of saying it. Oh, no problem. We have a <laughs> sphere of influence, and this is where a country may be divided up, where a, a foreign power, an outside power, um, they have exclusive trading privileges. Like in China at this time, there were at least half a dozen, maybe more mm -hmm. countries involved where they carved up China and took control of it to, to trade there and to, and to make money. Uh, the Chinese are going to fight back, and that was known as the Boxer Rebellion. We'll get to that a little bit Fighting? later. Like boxing? Yeah. No. Oh. Unfortunately not. Darn. And we have economic <laughs> imperialism where a country is controlled by businesses rather than by governments. Uh, Hawaii is an example of that. Uh, it was the Dole Fruit Company. I was just going to say Dole. That was Sugar running the show. Yeah. All right, some African resistance. So um, for an example, we talked about France and these other countries. So they are going to be in Algeria for over 50 years. Um, is that Mandingo? Yes. Um, in French West Africa, uh, battling for 16 years to fight um, the French and fight their rule. And now do you pronounce it Mahi Mahi or Maji Maji? What do you say? I say Mahi Mahi. <laughs> do you really? What do you say? I don't know. Maji Maji? I don't know. <laughs> no, in the book, I think it's Mahi Mahi. Right. Um, the rebellion, and it's interesting because here we see the Africans and part of their culture. Um, they thought if they drank this water, that when the Germans were shooting at them, the bullets would turn into water. And so they just went into battle with essentially no protection, thinking that this, um, you know, the magic water would protect them. And clearly we could see the difference in culture and, you know, the advantage 
against fighting of the, the Germans in that situation. And that was a lot of Africans that died, 75,000. Yeah. You'd think after the first 20 or 30 or so, yeah. but... They would realize the bullets were not turning to water, but, you know, they didn't, and... It was disastrous, and, yeah. and after all of those soldiers were, were dead, not enough people were left to, to work the land, and, and another 150,000 died of famine, so imperialism had such horrible effects to the African people. These were the African leaders sentenced to death for organizing the rebellion, um, as you can see here. It's just my, is it Mahi fish? I was just thinking about just that. Let it go. <laughs> let it go. Let it go. Uh, in Ethiopia, they were actually able to hold off the, the Europeans from taking over. Pretty embarrassing mm -hmm. for Italy um, when the <laughs> emperor of, of uh, Ethiopia, Menelik II, purchased weapons from the French, from the Russians, and when the Italians showed up, it was an <laughs> even playing against. field. <laughs> and uh, so they defeated Italy at the Battle of Adawa, and they continued to stockpile weapons. So they're the only African country to remain free of European influence, which is... Like from the, from the very beginning, right? Never... Yeah, it's yeah. very impressive. Uh, do you know who the Italian leader is going to be before World War II that conquers Ethiopia and, and regains uh, Italian pride? Hitler's BFF. Um, I know. What's the, why am I trying to blank on his name? Mussolini. Mussolini. So the costs of imperialism were, were heavy. Africans yes. were treated as inferior. They lost their resources, their lives, exposed Jeez. to diseases. Famines. White people are dirty. <laughs> uh, they were assimilated by the white man. Um, their cities were crowded and unsanitary. It's very, it sounds very similar to uh, Chapter 9 and industrialization, like life in a factory, it <laughs> kind does. of. And new boundaries were created without any regard to nationalities of the people, yep, like there's we've a, seen in Hotel Rwanda. There's a really good map uh, in the book that shows you the actual borders and then the borders of the, the territories. And you can see how they crisscross and they don't match up at all. So. I'm sure they've all seen that already. Oh, yeah, because I know you guys have all read your book. Uh, there were benefits to imperialism. <laughs> uh, they don't outweigh the costs, but we have new medicines introduced to Africa, telephone and telegraph Technology. lines, roads, dams, railroads. Um, African products are available. Yeah. Yep. So schools, hospitals, improved sanitation, uh, reduced local warfare. So there are some benefits, yeah. but overall, um, the costs far outweigh the benefits. All right. Good luck on your quiz, guys.